Hello, I'm Mark Greenberg, Director of the Special and Digital Collections Department and the Florida Studies Center in the USF Libraries. It's my great pleasure to introduce Otis R. Anthony, a Tampa native and USF graduate whose passionate commitment to the history of African Americans in Florida has led to the creation of the Otis R. Anthony African Americans in Florida Oral History Project. Project. As you are aware, I'm a graduate of the University of South Florida, and one of my degrees is in Africana Studies. And it was there that I became deeply excited about the history of the African American community, not only in Tampa and in Florida, but around the world. And I took that curiosity, I suppose, into the community when I became uh, a member of the staff of the Greater Tampa Urban League. I was approached by one of the uh, museum directors for the Hillsborough County Museum who said we got this great idea for a project on the history of African Americans in Tampa and Florida. Would you be interested in working with it? And I was so excited. It was for me so consistent with my own philosophy. It was consistent with my studies and it was the kind of thing I was young, I was energetic and it was the kind of thing that I wanted to do because it gave me an opportunity at a ver very early age to make a difference. And so I quickly accepted and uh, uh, eventually organized a staff of about seven people. And we first got started at the Hillsborough County Museum. And this was in the late, late 70s. As a student, when, when I started on this project, again, I have to reflect back on the fact that as a student, I was inspired by what I learned here at the University of South Florida. And I was really anxious to go into the community and apply what I learned. Now, I have to say that uh, what I learned intellectually uh, ran into a wall <laughs> of reality when I got into the community. But we had a staff of seven. We had four people who were interviewers who actually went out into the community, uh, every sector of the African-American community here in Tampa, and did oral interviews with various uh, members of the African-American community. Many of some of these members were in their 90s, some were in their 80s, in their 70s, but all of them had a very rich and incredible story to tell about their experiences growing up in Tampa, working in Tampa, and trying to make a life uh, for themselves in Tampa. So many of them migrated to this area as a result of work. Uh, for example, many of the longshoremen that we interviewed in this project were men who worked on the Mississippi River and they worked in New Orleans and they worked their ways down to Tampa and they became a part of this project. So you'll see a lot of that, how the demand for work really uh, uh, helped people to migrate to this area we call Tampa now. And you'll see that there's a vast variety of people. There are doctors and lawyers and maids and servants and laborers and postmen, uh, you know, just, just a great array of people involved uh, with this project. We were also activists, and I should say that. And, and as activists, we believe that knowing the history and being able to teach the history to people in the community when we were organizing was a, was a real uh, uh, weapon in our hands when we were out in the community trying to get the community to respond to issues. So the history became part of us in that sense. It was a reflection of our commitment uh, to make a difference. When we were trying to assess what we had done with the project, we talked about the fact that the children and the grandchildren that will have the opportunity to read their grandmother's history and their grandfather's history, this history would serve as an inspiration to them to make a difference in their own lives and make a difference in their own community. And we thought if it had that kind of impact, then that was saying a lot about the power of history and what it means to a community and means to a people.